In breaking news out of Minnesota, police say five family members and a dog were all found dead inside a Duluth home today. According to investigators, police were searching for someone in regards to a welfare check in nearby Hermantown, and the investigation led officers to this house. After officers entered around 1230 wearing tactical gear, they found bodies of five people, all believed to be related. Tonight, police say the suspect is among the dead. New developments tonight surrounding drama for North Dakota's longest serving state senator. Senator Ray Holmberg has resigned from his position as chairman of the Legislative Management Committee, though not legislature as a whole. He's been under fire since an explosive local media article came out last week about a string of about 70 text messages he exchanged with an inmate, that inmate accused of child porn possession and sexual abuse. Prosecutors say the 77-year-old senator texted 34-year-old Morgan DeRosier to have his young boyfriend come to his house so the boyfriend could give the senator a massage. The boyfriend later telling investigators he had no idea Morgan DeRosier was, quote, serving him up to an elderly man. 34-year-old Nicholas Morgan DeRosier, we're talking about here. When asked for a comment today, Holmberg's attorney says Senator Holmberg resigned simply because he, quote, doesn't want the investigation to reflect on the important work the board is doing. Tonight, in a statement, Governor Burgum's office tells Valley News Live, quote, Governor Burgum agrees with Senator Holmberg's decision to step down. All right, switching gears to the weather. Check this out. This is Copper, one of the grizzly bears, the zoo in Wapaton, kind of playing in the snow this morning, at least admiring it. He seemed to enjoy it a bit more than most of us did. First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson joins us now to see if the wintry weather will ever end. Hutch. I got to tell you, I've heard a lot of adjectives for our weather lately, and uh, that bear probably had the nicest terms as we look in on our sky cam. This is facing out to the east over the Red River along the I-94 corridor. A quiet night. We did have a few sprinkles work their way across the area. And again, another quick look at those snowfall reports here in Fargo. I measured eight tenths of an inch, five inches just to the southwest of Bemidji uh, reported today. Itasca, Park Rapids, Pelican Lake, all four inches there. Cormorant, two and a half inches. And then after that, can you believe the temperatures, how they warmed? Even with all the slush on the roads, we still hit 50 degrees in Fargo and better than that in southeast North Dakota. Gwinter, 57 and a gorgeous setting sun as we closed out our day. Here come those little showers that evaporated before they hit the ground. That's called Virga. Some of them did make their way down to your windshield, but not a lot. There they are, and they are heading right now through portions of lakes country. Well, there's our snow from this morning as well. So once this makes it through, most of us will see fairly quiet conditions heading into the overnight current temperatures, 30s to the east of the Red River and 40s to the west. Now, as we take a look at your forecast for Friday, turning our heads there, a couple of severe thunderstorms are a possibility. We'll go over that. And then Friday, the beginning of a multi-day storm system that will bring significant snow out west. I'll have the latest update for you on that as well, Justin, here in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. New tonight, candidates running for open seats in the Fargo School Board shared why they think they deserve the position. As Valley News Team's Alex Larson explains, some are looking to make a change. With 15 candidates for the five open seats for the Fargo School Board, the form allowed the candidates to answer questions from the public. So my plans for school board are to uh, engage parents, leverage community partnerships, and support our educators. So uh, that means that we get the resources back into the classroom. We start the task forces and the engagement of our community and of our uh, families, and that we work on closing achievement gaps, especially for multicultural students. The candidates were split into two groups to accommodate for the big number of those running. I am really determined to help get parents more involved and help teachers feel supported. I have a lot of experience working with children with special needs and so making sure that everybody has the resources to address some of those issues. There are four incumbents running again, which means there will be at least one new board member. It's actually something I've been thinking about for a long time. 2018 was the first time that I 
spoke at the board and again that was about addressing needs um, for students with special needs and making sure that teachers had the resources that they needed. And many of the candidates are parents of students in the Fargo Schools District. I'm a mother of four. Um, I spend a lot of time in workforce development as a workforce development consultant for my work. Um, I am on the steering committee for professionals of color. I want to see more diversity on the board in both thought, beliefs, and in people. In Fargo, Alex Larson, Valley News Live. If you want to hear the full discussion, we'll have a link to the full stream of the forum on this story on our website, valleynewslive.com. Election Day, by the way, is June 14th. New developments tonight on Fargo's plans to renovate Island Park. While there aren't any plans set in stone just yet, Fargo's Park District officials say they're continuing to gather feedback to best understand how the park should be used. And while the current plan is to tackle Island Park, the Park District's executive director says they are also looking at repurposing places like Yonker Farm and Lindenwood Park. We think that's going to be some type of a conservation park with local conservation groups. Uh, we've got Lindenwood. We started, you know, we re relocated that lower road due to flood impacts, but we also want to redevelop Lindenwood and, and do a master planning process for Lindenwood. And then there's also uh, Johnson Park uh, up by NDSU that, you know, was previously a soccer complex. And we'd like to look at that and see what's the best use of that park, you know, for the neighborhood and the community overall. A second public input meeting for the Island Park project is set for next Tuesday at 6, the Robert D. Johnson Recreation Center. The debate over alcohol-related issues continued during Fargo's Liquor Control Board meeting today, this time taking note of problems at the windbreak. Police Chief Dave Zabalski made a point that it's difficult to prove any bar is over-serving someone, but Commissioner Dave Pepcorn thinks more needs to be done to hold establishments accountable, including potentially taking away their liquor licenses. I think it's up to us and then the city commission. Uh, and I, I guess what I would like to do is say you're on probation and, and if they don't change, then you're going to lose their license. I think that that would get that would get a lot more attention than what, the, what they're doing now. Tomorrow on Valley News Live, Chief Zabalski tells us more about the steps the department is taking to help combat alcohol related problems in the city. Tonight, a man is behind bars, accused of breaking into his ex-wife's home on Easter and trying to kill her. 40-year-old Aristotle Brown faces several charges, including premeditated attempted murder, assault, and a violating protection order. The victim told police that Brown stabbed her in the leg near a van outside their home Sunday. The victim told police one of their two children, also there at the time, laid across her lap trying to protect her. The child was not hurt. If convicted, Brown could be given half a life sentence. A person was killed in a crash involving a semi in Wilkin County this morning. That call came in just after 9, happened on Highway 210. Sergeant Jesse Graybo reports the, snow, uh, the roads were snowy and icy when a Jeep lost control and spun out, crossing the center line in front of a semi, which was driven by a Milner man. A 72-year-old Fergus Falls woman died in that crash. Highway 210 from Fergus Falls to Breckenridge was closed for about six hours before reopening this afternoon. New tonight, the Justice Department's filing an appeal looking to overturn a judge's ruling that just struck down the mask mandate on airplanes and on public transit. The CDC asked the Justice Department to appeal this decision, saying the Florida judge's decision has caused uncertainty, especially among their most vulnerable to COVID. Also new tonight, the Fargo Dome is getting a new football turf. According to the $2.5 million 10-year agreement, the field will continue to be known as the Gate City Bank Field at the Fargo Dome. The existing turf will be replaced, that new turf installed in early June. Still ahead tonight, why scientists say there is a giant warning about climate change coming out of a northern Minnesota forest. But next, as we head to bed tonight, we have showers exiting and at least a brief period of quiet weather. We'll go over your Thursday and then a multi-day storm system promises to bring some more significant snow to the region. We'll have details on that and a potential for some thunderstorms as well next.